Hi there, my name is Linda Foster. I have reinvented myself as an artist and my preference, my passion actually, is watercolours. Uh, I originate from North Yorkshire, um, but I've spent most of my adult life in Scotland. And these are the places that inspire me and I try and um, paint. I don't try and reproduce anywhere in particular, but I try and reproduce the sense of space that I felt when I was in that particular place. Um, for those of you who haven't been, my favourite places would be the Outer Hebrides, Orkney, Shetland, the Flow Country, um, Sutherland, Wester Ross, and any of those places where there aren't many people, to be honest. Um, but that's getting more difficult as, as time goes on. Um, the, water the watercolours I prefer are all um, artist watercolours and I would recommend that if you are starting out painting that you invest in artist or professional watercolours. Some of the um, companies that do them do these um, little spot tests so you can have a go with those and decide what colours you want rather than spending a lot of money on colours that you may try once and never use again. They... Um, there are also watercolour media like uh, granulation fluid. I use that a lot, which goes well with um, the watercolour paint itself and if you mix it with acrylic ink, because I think watercolour has expanded now to include water-based media um, and that's accepted by the Royal Society of Watercolour Artists as well. The papers I, I prefer are generally quite rough papers. You can get rough and smooth. I forget what the technical terms are. But the makes I use are Arsh and um, Two Rivers is particularly nice paper and Bockingford. All quite heavy. Anything under 140, you're going to have trouble stretching them and using them. I also use the gum pads. They're really easy to use and it does save stretching because I'm not really organised enough to, to do that sort of thing. Um, I'll try any techniques. I'm not a purist at all. Any techniques that come to mind, I'll give them a go and see if they fit with, with the feeling of, of the space that I want to represent. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of techniques today, but there will be others, so if you can spot them, that's fine. But the, the first one I'm going to do is using a credit card. Well, actually, it's a camping and caravanning card. Um, to do some, some rocks on, on a, just a sample piece. What I've done here is I've, I've done a sky. I've taped it down. I haven't stretched it, but I've taped it down. And I think this is a £140 Bockingford. I've also done the skyline there um, because I want to end up with a, a nice white line where the, the sea and the sky meet. But having done that, I can now take that off. That was just to show you. And I'm hoping it doesn't take all the... It does take all the paper off too. The thing to do with that is to use low tack masking tape and obviously this is not as low tack as it purports to be. So goodness knows that how that will be. But it's all part of the journey. I'm going to use Daniel Smith's and I'm going to use brown ochre, luna blue and grey titanium. So what I do to start off is just put some blobs on a, on a card and then I'll, I'll show you how I apply it to the paper. The reason I recommend artist watercolours is because the ratio of pigment to binder is, is bigger, it's greater, therefore you will get better effects um, of all the technique, any technique that you use in fact. I'm having trouble squeezing that out I think, there we go. So I start with that and then I transfer it to the card so that there's a little bit of each paint on the card and then we'll give it a go, see if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll do something else. Um, so we'll start just... I'm going to apply some water and some using a brush in a minute but I just wanted to get this this feel of, of rocks and we'll do some here just 
This is quite a new technique to me. Um, I spotted it on YouTube, so if, if you want to find new techniques, then that's the place to go. So now I will choose a brush and just add a bit of water and just make it into any shape, any shape you want, because I'm going to have a go at once it's a little bit damp, scraping some out to give different different features. So I'm sort of representing um, an in inlet with rocks either side. So we'll see what that does. Perhaps do with a bit more paint down here. So I'm going to use this card again to have a go at scraping some paler bits out. You'll get the hang of it because you, you can see where the paint is thicker, it doesn't scrape out so much. Um, and it's not as if I'm trying to reproduce something exactly. So I think, I think probably I'm okay with that. So now I'm going to um, just work into this a little bit to give you some idea of, of what a finished piece might look like. So what I want to do is keep that straight horizon there and leave it, at, it's not very dark actually that grey, so it would be better if it was darker because it won't show up as much but I'm just going to put some, some sort of, I don't know, water coming in, as though it's sort of flowing in from there onto, through the rocks and onto the beach. I'm not going to do very much with this because there's such a lot of detail in the, in the rocks. Um, and um, anyway, so I might not take it down to the bottom of the paper. And this line here is where the, the tapes actually spoil the paper. So if, if this got as far as being good enough to frame, I would, I would cut it off at that point. Um, but there we go. And I might lift out with a brush, another lifting out techniques. And then I kind of think it needs something a bit, a bit of detail about something. So I'm going to draw in some grasses here and maybe some birds, just using um, acrylic ink. I use a lot of mark making um, techniques. Um, this, this is one of my favourites. It's a, a draftsman's um, rule, I think. But I've put a selection here for you to have a look at. You'll find your own. I've got dip pens, I've got bamboo sticks, spatulas, um, and all sorts of things. Even sticks from the garden, so long as you make sure they've dried out. Um, it can be used to do mark making. In fact, it's good to experiment. So what I'm going to do is some grasses here. And it is just to give a bit of detail to the to the finished piece. Do some, just do a few birds, just to give a bit of break up the sky. Again, probably go with odd numbers. That's five. We'll do seven. And as far as I'm concerned, that that will do. Um, I'm not sure whether it'll make the framers, but as a demonstration, I'm quite happy with it. I'm going to um, have a go at, at using the credit card technique again and trying to do some sort of a, of a landscape. Um, so I'll, I'll talk you through it. It's, using a card is, is a relatively new technique to me. Um, so I'm still experimenting. So you'll have to forgive me. You can join me in my discovery of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to not prop that up at the moment. I'm going to do 
clean water and leave a bit of dry space in the middle. How much, I'm not sure. So it's, it, like I say, it's all experimental. So I've done that and I've squeezed some paint again onto a card that I'm going to use and we'll see what happens. And we get some sort of mountains going here, perhaps. And you'll see how the paint hasn't reacted on the dry, but where it hits the water, it, it started to, to spread, which is what I wanted it to do. You can see it there starting to do its, its own thing, which, which is the reason I love watercolour, I have to say, because it's, it's just unpredictable. If you find there's not enough water there, you can always give it a squirt. I think that's got potential. I don't quite know what I'm going to do with it yet, but we'll perhaps have a range of, of mountains or something like that. I think this is um, lunar blue. It might not be. It might be a violety thing. But I think I quite wanted to do that there. I'm actually quite pleased with that, but I think what I'm going to do is, is just to show you, you can then turn this into a sort of landscapey foreground if you want to. And one technique I use that I'm not going to, to use here because it takes too long to dry is cling film, which, which I might put over that. But if you, see, if you see what the paint is doing along this edge up here, I mean, it just is so exciting. So just play in your, in your dining room, your studio, whatever you've got, and just enjoy all the things that, that it can do. Um, here, here's a, a finished one of um, using the techniques that I used on, on the earlier one that you've, you've seen. And um, I quite like this. I've actually painted in an, um, a skyline at the back. But some of the, the drips from the paint I've made into little trees. And it's now a, a sort of mountainscape. And in the foreground, um, once it's dried, I've used various techniques. I've splattered it. I've used salt on it. Um, to lift the, the colours out and just to give it just to give it a bit of interest in the foreground. But that was just to give you an idea of what one is like when it's dried and it's finished, because I'm not sure there'll be enough time to see the other one. Okay. The next demo I'm going to show you, the next part of it is is um, I think it's technically called a lifting out technique. So what I need to do first is, is get some paint on the paper, a sort of sky shade. I'm, I'm using ultramarine and burnt sienna because it gives a nice bluey gray color. And I'll need a fair amount to cover the, to cover the, pa the paper. In actual fact, I might wet the paper first. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see the colour lifted out because there won't be much colour in it. So if we say that's, that's enough colour on the sky, um, you then take some blotting paper or good old kitchen roll and sc scrunch it up and dab it on and it will lift all the paint out and just squidge it round a bit and make cloud shapes, basically. But what I'm going to do is make some moodier cloud shapes. So I think I'll do this water here. I'll take it off because it's gonna, it'll make um, what they call cauliflowers if it dries back into the paint. So having lifted that out, I'm going to put in some a darker colour just on the clouds because you, because I wanted stormy clouds. So I'm just going to feed that into the bits that I've taken the paint out of and soften the edges. And this paint also will granulate and it'll separate out into slightly different different colours, which I get excited about. This also will have to dry before you see the full effect of it. Um, 
I don't know how to overcome that with demonstrations. I really don't. But you'll get the idea. The, the idea is that these clouds are white at the top um, and a bit stormy at the bottom. I don't know whether that shows it or not. And then I shall put some sort of landscape in that. Um, this is just to show you one I prepared earlier and how I, how I developed it slightly. And th these are the clouds using the technique that I, I've demonstrated and, and a bit of greyness to give a bit of mood to it. So all I've done is I've done some headlands, some, some water, but it could be moorland, it could be anything. And on the water here, I've, I've used cling film to give some sort of, um, you know, how the water comes in and it's got light areas and dark areas. And then a bit of beach. Um, I think it probably needs something else, so it might be back to grasses or, or something like that. But I wanted to show you the, the potential of the, the lifting out technique when you were doing the clouds. I think with the beach, I've, I've actually used some white ink there just to go over the, the, the bits there. And I use that um, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White because that will go over watercolour. Um, so you've got lots of different ways of putting white into your watercolour. Um, so if you forget to, to start off, because really you start off with watercolours by leaving the white that you want. You start off light to dark. But if you get it wrong or you just want to add a bit of extra white at the end, there's the things like this that you can use, um, which I quite like. I'm just going to show you another another way of doing it and and I'm going to use green and green is an incredibly different difficult color so you'll have to forgive me if it is too bright for you but you want to have a brush where you've got plenty plenty of paint on the brush and we'll do some sort of grassy shapes or leaf shapes I tend to always work in odd numbers because it just seems to make make things better. Um, so if we were doing birds in the sky, I'd put three or five or seven or that sort of thing. So right, I've done five leaves of grass. And what I'm going to do, you can leave them like that because there are some textures showing on that one. Or you can just take a bit of colour out here and there just to give them a bit of texture. So I'm just going to do stems in the background. And it doesn't matter if you touch the grass and it bleeds, that's part of the joy. Just add a bit of darkness to this and I'm going to do a this is you, I'm getting you to spot the different techniques I use. Because if you saw the video from last year, you might recognize them. There we are. I quite like those sort of shapes. I don't know whether you do, but I do, so. Uh, and then I'm going to do a little bit of splattering as well, because I quite like that too. I might use a bit of pale colour. And it's all representative, it's not meant to create anything in particular. Well, the reason I'm showing you this piece is because it has a couple of things on that, that although it's not a finished painting or, or anything, but it is something that I've put masking fluid on, which are these white bits here, which I haven't really mentioned yet. Um, and also, I, have, I took a photograph of this when it was wet, which I think um, will, will be shown before this, but I wanted you to see what happens when you've got puddles of paint, which were along here and you leave it to dry. And I believe in, in the trade, this is called um, cauliflowers or something like that. And I quite like them because the paint does its own thing. And you'll see from the puddles that were here in the first photograph that they're now moved right up the paper 
and done hard edges and split colours and all sorts. So, so that's all I, the only reason I was showing you that. And then I was going to take the masking fluid off it. Um, which I don't know whether you've tried masking fluid, but it's quite it's quite good fun. Okay, so that's that's that bit really. Um, I think that's uh, that's about it for for this session. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you. I hope it makes you want to go out and play and try different things with watercolors and don't be overwhelmed by them because I know their reputation is that they're difficult and yes they can be but don't strive for perfection just enjoy the paint as it as it does its own thing and and I'm sure you'll find it as enjoyable as I do okay thank you very much